Hey, how's it going? Let's learn to script for Reaper together. In this episode, we're gonna break down my kinda sorta first script. If you're interested, check out episode zero of this series. For a breakdown of what this series is about, meet our sensei, Leandro Facchinetti. And in the episode, Leandro broke down all the available programming languages for Reaper and gave you a lot of useful resources, so make sure to check that out. So by the end of this video, you will know what all this code that you see on screen right now means, and you'll be able to modify it if you choose to. And like we said in episode so zero, reading scripts is a good way to start to learn to write scripts. So with all that in mind, let's jump into Reaper and get coding. Let me give you a bit of backstory first. For our 50th episode of Rapid Fire Reaper tutorials, we made this action called Ask Kenny Joya. I thought it'd be a fun idea if somebody wants to look up a tutorial that they can just have an icon on their toolbar, click the icon, the browser will then navigate to Kenny Joya's channel, and then here I can go something like dynamic split, do my search, and here's all the Kenny Joya a goodness that we need. And in that video, I showed you how to create this action. So the link of that will go in the description. So that is the version zero of this quite useless, but kind of fun action. Fast forward to this week and I got chatting to Leandro Facchinetti and he helped me write this first script. And when I say he helped me, he really did the whole thing and I watched in amazement. But he also helped me understand how he wrote the code and he showed me how simple it is. So before we dive into the script, let's just run it. So when I click this new script, you get a search bar right here. So this time I can do my search right on Reaper, hit enter, it'll open a new browser, there's the video. While I couldn't write this script on my own, I can definitely read the script and reading scripts is a great first step for your journey towards being able to code and be able to grab other people's scripts and make sense of it. Maybe not entirely, but at least make sense of the relevant bits and then you can modify them from there on. And you can do this to JSFX to extend their parameters or their step lengths. And you can do this to other scripts to make minor adjustments for your specific workflow. All right, let's look under the hood of this script and I'm gonna highlight the script and I'm gonna go edit action. Anything you have that has this script in front of it, that's in Lua, you can choose edit action and you will open the script and you will see the code and you can modify the code. Now, as you can see, this is a very simple code. Everything that you see in blue, those are not parts of the script itself. They are additional notes. So really these few lines are all there is to this script. So before we do anything, since we're noobs, I'm going to press command and A and then command and C to copy all the information from here. And I'm gonna close this and I'm going to create a new action. So I'll go to new action down here and I go new Rhea script, and then here we gotta give it a name. So for example, let's modify this script to do a search not only for Kenny Joya, but for anybody else. And you can modify this if you don't like Kenny Joya, which by the way, if you don't like Kenny Joya, get the f out of here. But let's modify this script so that it does a very wide YouTube search on Reaper tutorials. So we'll go search for Reaper tutorial and three dots indicating that a new window will be open upon executing this action. So I hit enter and we'll get like a blank space here and I can paste all my code right here. So the way Leandro wrote this script is really cool and interesting. You should go check it out in the live stream. He did it really in the space of about 15 minutes. So go check out the live stream if you want to really get into the nitty gritty of the code. I am not qualified to do that. I'm not going to do that in this video. I'm just going to show you how to modify it. So another really cool thing that you can do is you can click on this API help here. You will open this Rhea script API and here you have hundreds of functions that you can copy and paste into Reaper to create your own script. So for example, if you want any bit of code to add media item to a track. That's already a function that's created. So you just click on it. You copy this bit into your script and Bob's your uncle. And all these functions come with Reaper so that the user doesn't need to install anything other than Reaper to use them. And additionally, there are some third party stuff that comes with SWS. So we use two things from this. The first thing that we used, so you can just go command and F and search for get user input. We want the user to run the search. So we find this and we click on it and we get this little bit of code then we can copy that. So we added that here. And here what you can see is the title bar of the page. So if I run the action, you will see that it says search Reaper Mania tutorial. And then it says search. We can modify all of this. So for example, in our action, we want to go just search Reaper tutorial. So I can modify this like that. Just for the sake of education, let's change this to choose topic. And then here this width changes the size of your window. So right now our search bar looks this big. If I grab this 100 and change it to, for example, 
example, 150, you can see that it got a little bigger. It's a good idea every time you modify to go command and S and then run the action and then do a test so you make sure you don't break the code. So, okay, cool. Now it says search reaper tutorial, choose topic, and then I'll choose topic here. Before we run a search, let's look at the rest. This little bit of code just makes sure that if your search is empty or if you didn't continue by hitting cancel, well, nothing happens. No action is run, no hard feelings. So this next bit of code, again, we grab from the API, but it comes with SWS as part of something that Cephillion has written, Cephillion shell execute. Open the given file or URL in the default application. And that's a very simple function that we can also copy to our script. And this line makes sure that you have SWS installed. If you don't have SWS installed, this function cannot be executed. So a value of nil is returned. We can give a message to our user to go install SWS. So now that we set this condition, we have Reaper CF shell execute. So this is the URL that will be opened. So this URL goes to Kenny Joyo's channel and then runs a search. And then whatever value you add to it is added to this to create a URL. So in order to do that, let's look at how YouTube searches work. So every time you do a search in YouTube, it generates a URL. And in that URL, you have some stock kind of URL stuff, youtube.com search query equals. And then after this equal sign is where we get all this stuff. Another thing that we can see is that between our keywords, there are pluses because in a URL, you can't have spaces. There are some special characters like forward slash, question mark, stuff like this, which you can't have in a URL. So instead, YouTube will codify those. So it will grab all the spaces and make them a plus. It grabbed my forward slash and made it a percentage 2F. It grabbed my question mark and made it a percentage 3F. If we want to generate a URL, we need to convert our spaces and special characters so that the URL generated is not a broken URL. So I'm going to grab this first bit of the URL. This will be the same across all searches. Everything after that depends on what we type into this box. So I'm going to go command and C to copy that. And I'm going to paste that here. So that generates the first bit of our URL. And then after that, we get our search term. Our search term is created up here after the user types something into the box. And then that will be added to this. The last bit that we need to do is to convert those special characters. And converting those special characters, again, was something that Leandro could have coded. He looked it up really quickly. And we saw that with this simple line, we can get that done. Again, if you want to see the details of how this is done, you should check out the live stream. The only bit we are interested in is this first bit of the URL that we want to modify. And this time, as we said, we don't want to only search Kenny Joya's channel. We want to check out all Reaper tutorials on YouTube. I can add the word Reaper right here in the search term and I can go Reaper plus. Now, whatever we type into the search box, will go after this. So we'll look for Reaper plus whatever we type into the search. So let's again save this and I can go something like MIDI editing. A new page is generated. You can see Reaper MIDI editing tutorials. You got Kenny Joya, you got Nate Kinast. Oh, that's me. Now, hopefully you understand how easy it is to do this for other search engines as well. I can make this Google. I can make this let me Google that for you. I can search any page that I want with this simple function as long as we open that URL. So all of that is really cool. And we can look at other scripts in Reaper. So whenever you look at any script, you can kind of look under the hood and see what's going on. One of the easier ones, for example, is this outboarder script. Insert marker at edit cursor with custom name and color. So we can again edit this action. We can really easily see what this script is all about. It's creating a script with a custom name and color. We know very easily to change this little bit of code and then that will change the name of the marker. And for the colors, we have these available colors colors right here. This is the name that we use to recall those colors. And this is a function that you can find in the API with the RBG value of that color. And then that will generate another color. So for example, what we can do is also modify this little bit of code, grab this line, copy it. I can paste it down here. Let's call this one off white. Instead of 255, we're just going to do 200 across the board. And that will have a slightly off white color to it. And as you can see, this script itself was made by a bunch of different different Reaper functions, like it gets the cursor position, it gets the play position. It also uses the count project markers to make sure that it's not overwriting a previously existing marker. And then it uses the add project marker function to add a marker. Real easy stuff. None of this needs to be coded from scratch. You just grab little bits of the API and you put them in a script. So now I'll tell you how to download our custom action and you can do this via Repack. So it's really easy. All we got to do is open GitHub and this is Leandro's Reaper repository. So all you 
you got to do is add this little bit of information to Reapack. I will put this whole page in the description. Once I copy this, I go back to Reaper. I go to extensions, Reapack, and import repositories. And then all I got to do is paste this link here and hit OK. I have already done this. And as you can see, Leandro Facchinetti's scripts are now in my Reapack. So then I can go back to extensions, Reapack, browse packages. I can do a search here and this is the action. So I just right click on it and I can go install version one and Bob's your uncle. You get that action. OK, and before we wrap this one up, here's Leandro with a couple more pro tips on the Reaper API and the script editor in Reaper. Now for a couple of pro tips. The first is super helpful anywhere in your script. When you start typing Reaper, you will see all the functions here and you can say maybe Reaper create media item and you will find all the functions that have these names in there somewhere. That's super helpful if you don't necessarily want to go to the API, you sort of remember the function that you want to use. Next, if you put your cursor on any name and look at the bar here on the top, it shows a bit of documentation about the parameters that a function expects and sometimes what it returns as well. And if it's not showing that, you can hit command K and you will see the same information below here. On a PC, it would be control K. And then finally, if you have your cursor on some function and you hit F1, you will be taken to the documentation for that function, which has more information than just the parameters. It has some text explaining what the function does. So F1, super helpful when you're writing and especially when you're reading scripts because some of the arguments may be cryptic, but if you go to the docs, then they start to make sense. I see you on the next one, bye. Also make sure to check out Leandro's other actions. There are really awesome actions in there, like the ripple delete that we did a custom action up. He scripted it. There's some fast forward stuff that's really, really useful, really cool stuff. And check out his channel. He has really awesome tutorials and scripting. So make sure to give him some love, give him a subscription. I'm gonna go on his live streams. He's gonna join us on a live stream this Wednesday. So make sure to join us if you're interested in this type of thing. Thanks for watching, bye.